Good morning, everyone. In today's world, nations are finding themselves growing increasingly interdependent, not only due to globalization, but also due to the cross-border effects of industrialization. Rising demands are driving industries to jeopardize the environment, a major example being the palm oil industry. In Indonesia, where production is highest, the government is seeing immense economic progress owing to the industry and is therefore reluctant to prioritize sustainability. This allows us to evaluate the tension between the economic growth promoted by the industry as well as its many environmental consequences. This issue has significant ties to the environment as a global political challenge, as it transcends political boundaries and different levels of analyses, forcing actors who are otherwise unrelated to get involved. As a whole, Indonesia is the third largest country a greenhouse gas emitter in the world. Palm oil expansion constitutes about 60% of its total CO2 emissions, making it a major concern for climate change activists who anticipate significant global economic tolls and major development setbacks in the future owing to climate change. Furthermore, it plays a significant role in the overall problem of deforestation, contributing to the annual loss of 18.7 million acres of forest worldwide. This has sparked major backlash from NGOs such as the WWF, whose biocentric view opposes the consequent habitat loss for local wildlife and the threat to biodiversity. For instance, in Borneo, Borneo is seeing an annual decline of 1.5 to 2 percent in its local orangutan population. However, at the same time, the Ministry of Agriculture in Indonesia has actually targeted an annual expansion rate of 2.55% owing to the economic progress which the industry promotes. It is subject to a huge market, accounting for about a third of global vegetable oil production, and is significantly easier to produce. The industry has also promoted some social benefits, including an increase in employment opportunities and improved infrastructure. These gains have made it quite difficult for the Indonesian government to push back on forced conversions, Though there are some policies in place aimed at reducing unsustainable production, they lack the financial incentives to be implemented properly. All countries struggle with how to balance short-term benefits and long-term benefits. Indonesia has a GDP of about 3,000 US dollars, which makes it a developing country. And like most developing, develop, developing countries, it's in a position where immediate financial gains, or short-term benefits, appear more necessary for development. This links to the concept of sustainability, which is a country's development being able to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future needs to meet future generations to meet their own needs. However, many developing countries argue that they are not stable enough to even consider sustainability and that this responsibility therefore belongs to wealthier states. Of course, this logic can be quite difficult to follow when it's often developing countries who harbor some of the most damaging industries. Nonetheless, developed countries have made efforts to take on the responsibilities that Indonesia has failed to meet by applying hard power to the situation in efforts to coerce the Indonesia to change its behavior. For instance, in April 2017, the European Union, which supports about 70% of the country's of the industry's total earnings, adopted the resolution on palm oil and deforestation of rainforests, which cuts out a significant portion of the industry from EU markets. This, of course, sparked major backlash from ASEAN members who rely heavily on their support and the following ASEAN summit released an official statement where they urged the EU to consider sustainable options rather than to reject the industry completely. Uh, this demonstrates the success of the hard power tactic in communicating the importance of modern environmentalism to Indonesia, which basically characterizes the uh, incorporation of environmental concern into the promotion of general development. The industry's dependence on foreign investments stems from the strategic tendency of multinational corporations to invest in developing countries. Owing to globalization, specifically the integration of global economies, companies are able to translocate to developing countries such as Indonesia and take advantage of their many loose and unregulated environmental policies as well as their cheaper labor forces. More than two-thirds of the Indonesian palm oil industry is actually controlled by Singaporean and Malaysian companies. This conflict of interest gives rise to a complex interdependence which reduces the effectiveness of ASEAN members to negotiate a concrete solution. For instance, one of the major environmental consequences is the uh, resulting toxic haze from the industry's uh, slash and burn techniques. This haze has traveled to Singapore and Malaysia. However, due to their economic ties, the two countries hold less firm positions that could be expected against the issue. Ironically, Indonesia did not suffer any significant losses from uh, the toxic haze in 2015, as weather conditions blew the gases away. On the contrary, tourism in Bali actually spiked, as there was now less competition within the tourism realm in Southeast Asia. This demonstrates another reason as to why the Indonesian government doesn't really consider modern environmentalism, as ignoring it has in large part uh, worked in their favor. However, this does not mean that the government is entirely free from some of the immediate environmental repercussions. 
Palm oil is a strategic economic sector in the Indonesian province of central Kalimantan, which is basically the heart of Borneo. It is one of the highest rates of deforestation owing to palm oil expansion in the world, which significantly impacts its local environment. The forests, play, the forests in the area play a critical role in maintaining the natural water supply uh, by preventing erosion from heavy downfall. Not only does clearing the forest lead to major damage downstream, which in turn threatens the region's unique biodiversity, but also dries out the remaining forests and leaves them extremely susceptible to fires. This these issues uh, cause rural villages to suffer immensely, and the often rapid and uncontrolled crop expansion poses various social issues to traditional landowners in the areas as well, including labor exploitation, loss of access to land, and pressure on infrastructure. However, these issues do not have any significant impact on the Indonesian economy at large, and solving them is of low priority to the government. This exposes a major flaw in, their, in the government's understanding of development, as by definition it should include or incorporate the well-being of its people and not just the well-being of its government. A major key concept related to the case study is therefore legitimacy, or the, which gives the fundamental basis for the acceptability of an action. The legitimacy of the palm oil industry's widespread effects further looks at sovereignty, uh, or a country's independence. Stuart Mill, who is a liberalist theory, theorist, argues that interventions in other economies should be considered legitimate if based on sufficient utilitarian grounds, hence the pushback by other actors on the Indonesian economy. Environmental interdependence, which is becoming increasingly relevant as industrialization continues, diminishes the internal sovereignty of, in a sense, diminishes the internal sovereignty of countries, as sovereignty is no longer considered a legitimate excuse for the widespread effects of certain industries, even if those widespread effects are unintentional. Therefore, Indonesia is beginning to recognize the importance of sustainable development uh, as a result of external pressures. However, since these pressures are economic, it, we can, it's safe to assume that Indonesia's recent concern for the environment stems from its anthropocentric view. It stems from an anthropocentric view, which is the belief that the environment, for its own sake, is not valuable, but only for the benefit that it brings to other humans, which is the opposite of the biocentric view that the WWF held. The country's focus on itself further extends to the global political sphere. As essentially one of the only actors who actually sees significant benefits from the palm oil industry, it adopts quite a realist approach in prioritizing its own national interest over the collective interest of the global community. However, it also relies heavily on its economic ties to other countries through trade deals such as palm oil, and which introduces um, a liberalist view as they, prior as they value economic interdependence. Depending on which view prevails, liberalism actually has the potential to attract Indonesia towards a more uh, modern environmentalist approach. So environmental sustainability might be one of the most complicated issues that humanity has ever faced, as industrialization is creating multi-generational problems at a rate which we are unable to, which may, we may be unequipped to handle. And in Indonesia's current approach will likely be quite difficult to sustain as foreign actors continue to pressure for change, such as the EU, EU proposal. The country is also gaining a clearer perspective on the long-term economic losses resulting from such political tensions. And genuine concern for the environment, uh, or biocentrism, may arise as Indonesia, whose realist view uh, prioritizes high politics, begins to recognize that climate change can no longer be considered an issue of low politics. Therefore, Indonesia's prosperity depends on its ability to recognize the multifaceted interdependence, especially the economic interdependence of the liberal world in which they operate, reevaluate their understanding of development and have it include uh, the well-being of its people and not just the economy, and finally to turn towards environmentalism. Thank you.